But yeah, New Japan Dominion 2022. Dominion is usually, I would call it New Japan SummerSlam. That's what I always refer to it as. And uh, usually big stuff uh, happens at Dominion. Um, if you remember, that's where Kenny Omega actually beat Okada for the world IWGP world title, man. Dominion's had some, some big stuff here. Let's get right into it. We had breaking news here, but... Uh, we're going to go through the whole card here. I'm only going to go into detail into the matches I really, really like. So, uh, United Empire versus Taguchi, Master Wado, and Tenzan. Uh, nothing much to say here. Just simple tag team match. Fun stuff. Uh, Hanare ends up winning with a full Nelson. What is it with everybody, bro? I swear. Ever since Lashley brought back the freaking Master Lock, everyone, we got 10 from the Dark Order, Lashley himself, and now freaking, uh, Hanare is using a full Nelson as a finisher. I swear, ever since Lashley did it. Uh, but let's get into the next match. We got LIJ versus B -B -B Bullet Club. Uh, uh, new member Ace Austin fits very well. Uh, I love Ace Austin, man. He's uh, definitely a lot bigger than TNA, man. He needs to get the fuck out of there. Uh, freaking um, uh, El Fantasmo stole Alex Zane's socks in the best of the Super Junior. And he still has them. Freaking hilarious. I was like, this dude really stole this man's socks. Uh, Naito is very impressed. So Ace Austin has that little stick thing. You know, he's got the gambit stick where it starts off small. He extends it. You know, he pops it into the air. He catches it. Naito is like super fucking hyped about it. I thought this was really funny. He just keeps looking and he's just like, oh my god. Like, how does this work? So him, uh, Hiromu, and they're all trying to figure it out how it works. Uh, then the match gets started finally. Uh, freaking um, uh, Codebreaker and then Ishii ends up... Ishii, oh my god. Uh, Ishimori uh, ends up holding on to the face. Uh, El Fantasma then hits a moonsault while they're still in the Codebreaker position. That was really cool. Uh, the famous El Fantasma back break where this man does a million flips, hypes it up, gets the crowd all crazy, does the fucking uh, the back break. Uh, Ace Austin ends up pulling up another magic stick. I, I love saying that. He pulls out another magic stick and uses that to rake Naito's back. That had to hurt. Uh, fucking the whole time. I think it was Fantasma goes out there and he's just like, look how, look how sharp that stick was. Look how sharp that was. Because, you know, they're just like, oh, he, rat he raked Naito's back. That shit must have hurt with the little stick. Uh, freaking, let's see, uh, Ishimori and Hiromu have some really nice back and forth for you, I can't wait for their next match, I still can't believe he tapped out fucking, uh, Desperado clean, it's still crazy to me, uh, Ishimori getting a big push, uh, good back and forth here, sudden death to Bushi by, um, uh, El Fantasmo, uh, gets up saved, uh, tornado kick combo into a burning hammer by Fantasmo, that was really cool by, uh, Ace Austin and El Fantasmo. Uh, El Fantasmo hits a see you later, and then he gets the win. A clean win here for Bullet Club. I thought because they had Naito with him, I thought for sure LIJ was going to win, but no. They actually didn't. That was uh, very, very, very surprising. Uh, but this was fun. We get the random fucking match of Luke Gallows versus Toriano, and I was in. As soon as I saw his matchup, I'm like, what the fuck? Um, in, <laughs> um, he keeps spraying gallows with sanitizer. Uh, gallows gets really pissed off, takes off the sanitizer bottle and starts drenching it all over him. Uh, Yano is fucking around. He keeps pulling on his beard. Uh, he keeps slapping him on the bald head. He's chasing him around. Gallows finally catches him, beats him up for a little bit, hits the gallows pole and somehow Yano kicks out. Even the commentary stream was just like, isn't that his finish? Like, they were so confused. They're just like, why the fuck did this dude just kick out the gallows pole? Uh, yeah. Um, freaking Yano then gets a low blow in the roll-up and the fucker actually... I swear this guy, man. Toriano is the king of uh, sneaking in uh, wins right there, man. I, I love this guy. He's fucking hilarious. Suzuki Good was hard to torture. Um, uh, freaking Shock Arrow... Uh, double arm wrapped pile driver by show for the win. Great move. House of Torture gets the win. Uh, you you know how the House of Torture stuff goes. You know how it goes. 
Uh, my favorite tag team here, Great O Cobb. Uh, that's uh, Jeff Cobb and Great O'Con versus Bad Luck Valet and Chase Owens. I completely forgot Bad Luck Valet and Chase Owens were the IWGP tag champions because I thought Great O Cobb never lost them. Uh, but Tour of the Islands win new tag team champs once again, how it should have been from the start. A okay with that. Uh, we get a big match here. We get Goto versus Tanahashi for the winner faces John Moxley at the AEW World Championship, the interim. Uh, Goto uh, gets a big clothesline on the outside. They're taking a lot of it to the outside. Uh, Goto hits a spin kick in the corner, then a bulldog combo for a near fall. Uh, Goto gets up Tanahashi, hits a beautiful Saido suplex, tries to float over and hit another one, but Tana ends up turning it into a dragon screw. Tanahashi ends up taking control here, working on Goto's leg. Uh, Goto fights back, powers out of that, uh, hits a Hiroshi Giroshi for a near fall. Uh, he tries to go for another Hiroshi Giroshi, but Tana, you know, he does the thing where he can hit a sling blade out of nowhere. He ends up hitting a sling blade out of the Hiroshi Giroshi. That was fucking cool. Um, yeah, that was pretty dope. Uh, freaking, uh, he, Tanahashi ends up going for like, I don't know, it looks like some type of bulldog or maybe a sling blade. Uh, Goto catches him in midair, tosses him into the corner, has him draping position, hits a GTR for a near fall. I really, I really thought that was it. I always forget. Uh, Tanahashi with a gigantic sling blade. Uh, I mean, this guy's sling blades are the best. Uh, Ace's eye, high fly flow. Like I said, this was a fun little match. Not that it was in jeopardy or nothing, but this was fun. This is good stuff. Um, freaking uh, Goto uh, put out a good match here, and it was kind of nice to add a little bit of importance to him for a little bit. You know what I mean? But like, Goto's fucking dope. We get... Yo, this match was fucking insane. Let me explain to you this. So the King of Pro Wrestling fucking little title thing Okada made... Basically, whoever holds on to it is the king of the gimmick matches. They can make whatever strange gimmick they want. So we got Shingo and Taichi here. I fucking love Taichi's entrance, by the way. And Shingo is just the fucking best. So this is a 10-minute scramble match. Now, if you remember the WWE scramble match, it was basically whoever, you know, they just keep pinning and pinning and pinning and pinning. Whoever's got the most pins at the end. It was like a Super Iron Man match. This one is strange. So for every single time you pin your opponent, it doesn't even have to be a two count or three count. It could be at any count of pin. You get a three, you get a four, you get a five. You get a point added to your tally. Dude, this match I thought was going to be a fucking mess. This turned into such an exciting fucking match. This is so dope. This is great. So, 10 minute scramble. Points added. Remember, every single time the referee hits the mat while someone's getting pinned, they get a point. Guys are going right at it right away, 100 miles per hour. Winner is the one with the most pin points, I guess you want to call them. Uh, fucking um, nice hook kick by Tai Chi. That's the old Booker T arm trap one. The King Booker one. Uh, Spike DDT into a sliding lariat by Shingo. Again, these guys are going... 100 miles per hour. Everyone should check this match out. This match was so fucking weird and so good. Uh, big Saido suplex by Tai Chi. Uh, tai Chi ends up taking off the pants, so he's getting serious. Uh, we get a great strike exchange where Shingo's giving them the strikes. Tai Chi's giving them the kicks. And then Tai Chi sneaks in a couple kicks towards the end. Both guys go down. Pomping bomber. Tai Chi ends up no-selling. Hits a big jumping enziguri kick. Uh, and then to another big jumping kick. These guys are going... 100 miles per hour. This match is so fucking cool. Uh, Shingo eats Taichi with strike. Like, I mean, he starts striking him for like two minutes straight. Just elbows, punches, everything you could think of. Like, in my notes, I even wrote, this This was fucking dope. And then we get a crazy exchange. They try to tie it up because Taichi was, it was 6 to 11. Taichi's trying to tie it up. By the end, we get 11 to 10. Shingo wins by one point but yo this match was fucking cool i kind of like how they kind of let those guys make their own little gimmick things like whoever is the uh, whatever the king of pro wrestling has the little trophy they dead ass get to make their own kind of crazy gimmick match like i know okada was doing like fatal four ways like it's a cool thing because new japan doesn't really do gimmick matches so it's kind of cool to have them at least kind of be like hey whoever has this thing 
go for it. Like, I didn't think Shingo would come up with this, like, little cool idea. So, yeah, I'm cool with Shingo doing more cool stuff like this. I thought it was really dope. Uh, we get a surprisingly really good match here. I'm telling you, man, there is a difference between Carl Anderson and Impact Wrestling and WWE and then New Japan. We get Carl Anderson one-on-one with Tama Tonga for the Neverweight Open title. Uh, it's the Battle of the Gun Stuns right here. Uh, Tama waits for nobody, attacks Carl right in his entrance. I love Carl's theme, by the way. That shit heat. Uh, the match going crazy. Uh, fucking Tama... And and Carl are going at it at the uh the entrance way. I don't know. I'm telling you, Tom would feel like this man was legitimately fucking pissed off. Yo, this dude clobbered Carl Anderson anytime he had a chance. His strikes were on point. He fucking potatoes the shit out of Carl near the entrance way, where Carl falls off the entrance way and then falls off the freaking um the steel ramp, crashes through. It looked like he rocked his shit. Oh my god. It was crazy. Uh, we get a gun stun on the rope by Carl. That was really cool while Tama was trying to get back in. Uh, Luke Gallows gets involved. Hits a choke slam on the apron to Tama Tonga. Uh, Tama throws Gallows head first into the pole. Ha, got it, Gallows pole. So he, he takes him out. Stinger splash by Tama. Uh, Carl no sells into a spine, a beautiful spine buster by Carl. Uh, Tama with the head shrinker DDT is old finish. Uh, gets a near fall. Uh, Carl fights back with some nice European uppercuts. Carl has some of the best European uppercuts. Him and Zack Sabre Jr., man. Uh, this, this was legit old school Carl Anderson back from the freaking, uh, final G1 Shinsuke Nakamura shit. Like, this was Carl going ape shit, bro. Uh, two puns right there. Uh, so head shrinker DDT. Uh, Carl fights back with a beautiful Liger bomb. Usually he runs, but he just dumps his shit right there. Uh, Tama slides out of that one after with a Tonga twist for a near fall. Big strike exchange. Again, Tama is just letting this dude have it. So I feel like after he felt that shit, freaking uh, Carl started letting him have it with the uppercuts. He was giving him some really freaking nice uppercuts. Holy shit. This match was awesome, dude. This is just like a straight up wrestling match. Uh, Tama with a big spin kick out of nowhere. Uh... Carl gets him up, Bernard Driver, Rikishi Driver, you know, gets a near fall. I really thought that was it. Uh, fucking Carl is uh, trying to get the gun stun. They do this cool spot where Tama goes for the gun stun, Carl goes for the gun stun, and they do this like five times, and each single time they escape the gun stun in a different way. I thought that was really cool. Uh, Luke Gallows comes in, uh, Tama hits the gun stun on him. Uh, distracted by their Carl, then hits his gun stun and brand new champion. This match was freaking awesome. I really, really enjoyed this match. Like, I saw this on the card and went, okay, whatever. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I was a huge Carl Anderson fan. I have been for a long time. But this dude has not done shit in TNA to me. Like, I, I, like, I always preferred him more as a singles guy. But you could tell this dude's just motivated when he goes to Japan. That's why I wish Balor would come back. I feel like Balor would be going crazy right now he was in Japan. But the fucking machine gun is back, man. And we can keep getting quality matches like this. Just keep Just keep him in Japan at this point. That was awesome. Uh, we got Will Ospreay versus Sonata. IWGP US title. The real man who should have won the US title from the beginning. I love Sonata, but freaking, it was Will Ospreay's time, baby. Uh, Rock hard Juice Robinson is injured. He had his appendix removed, so he had to give up the title. Continuing the curse of the U.S. title where everybody gets injured, everyone has to give it, or you just can't defend it. The only normal champion I think we had was Tanahashi for a little bit. Uh, So, yeah, this was all uh, insane, uh, we got a big Yakuza kick by Will Ospreay right away, uh, Sonata comes running, good to see Sonata also back from injury, uh, UFO backbreaker by Osprey for a near fall, uh, Sonata ends up trapping, uh, Osprey in the paradise lock, gets a drop kick in the booty, uh, sky twister dive on the outside by Osprey. M- mind you, this dude almost died, like, a couple weeks ago, and he just hit one of the most beautiful corkscrew dive moonsaults on the outside I've ever seen, this guy's crazy, uh, Osprey starts hitting a bunch of Kawada kicks to Sonata, but that does nothing but piss him off. 
And then Sonata hits a big fucking European uppercut. Uh, he goes to run, but hook kick right to the eye of Sonata. You know, the injured orbital bone. Ox cutter for a near fall. I thought that was a really good little story there. Uh, Sonata hits a, T- a version of the TKO. Not his usual version. Then the tiger suplex for a near fall. Osprey kicks out. Uh, goes for the Muda Moonsault, but ends up missing, as always. Uh, then, out of nowhere, just a hidden blade to the front of the face, right in the orbital bone. Sonata kicks out. I don't really like how they have people kicking out of the hidden blade now. Like, the hidden blade was so protected, but sadly, I feel like it's just like, fuck it now. I don't know if anyone's ever kicked out of the back of the head one, but even on um, Moxley, I think he kicked out of two of them. I'm just like, that dude, that move, it's the punt kick. That move is death. Like, that, that's like, you know, Skyner screwdriver type shit. But hits a hidden blade. Sonata kicks out. Uh, Sonata goes to hit the ropes. Uh, Osprey pops him up into a forearm again right into the eye. Uh, hits the hidden blade to the back of the head. Uh, could definitely end it, but picks him up. Stormbreaker. We haven't hit him seen hit Stormbreaker in a while. Hits Stormbreaker. Brand new IWGP US champion. But you see, Juice still has the physical belt. So we go back to the screw job of Will Ospreay. Where he says he's being fucked. He has no physical belt. And New Japan continues to screw him over. I really like what they're doing with the story with him. I really like that. You know the conspiracy. Like these people are just fucking me over. Over and over and over again. You know what I mean? So main event time. The match that completely changed. Forbidden Door. We're we're getting maybe two matches out. This is going to be crazy. So, Okada versus Jay White, IWGP World Title. Okada's had a 200 and something day run. He's pretty much been unstoppable. I'm not going to lie to you. I really thought he was going to rip through Jay White, call it a fucking day, Rainmaker. We're going to fucking Forbidden Door. Let's fucking party. That's why this match, I was super into it because I'm just like, are they really going to make Jay? I couldn't believe it. I just, I'm like, there's no way Jay White's going to win. You know what I mean? But. Damn, they, whoo, they did it, man. Uh, Jay White is in full control of this match. He is laughing at Okada, mocking Okada, making fun of Okada. He's doing everything you can do to piss this guy off. He's like, you're a fucking chump, bro. Uh, freaking, uh, uh, Jay, uh, Jay White then starts choking Okada with the ring apron. Uh, basically puts it over his face and he says, you can't breathe with the switchblade if you can't breathe. Uh, let's just say Jay White's trash talk is A1. Like, I know people love MJF, but to me, Jay White is my favorite promo out of everybody. He's fucking incredible. I love this guy so much. He's great. He's my favorite heel. Like, he's my favorite heel going for the last couple of years. Ever since he debuted, honestly. To, between him and heel Kenny Omega. Good shit. So, you know, he's choking him. He can't breathe with the slish blade. So, the crowd in New Japan is not allowed to cheer of covid and all that stuff so the whole time jy is trying to get the crowd to break the rules he's trying to get them to cheer for okada he's trying to get them to cheer for him it's pretty funny it's definitely a like you know it's something i don't think anybody would really think of uh jay white with the two sweet chop he is chopping the living meat chest out of freaking okada He. I'm telling you, Jay White's confidence was a hundred million, and I know why. Like you can sometimes tell when someone was gonna win the title, and that's what happened. Like I'm like, I fucking should have known. This dude is in a whole other level, and I knew why. <laughs> Cause he was gonna win the fucking world title from Okada cleanly. Uh, fucking uh, spoiler alert. So he's chopping the fuck of him, feeling himself way too much. Okada finally gets him on the outside. They start tussling for a little bit. Then Okada hits his nice running big crossbody. And I'm like, oh, Okada only does this for the big, big world title matches. Uh, suplex on the steel bear. Oh, Jay White. Oh, my God. He killed Okada. In the corner of the barric- out of the corner of the steel barricade, he hits a suplex. Oof. Uh, then he uh, two sweets Okada's nose while he's on the floor. After the freaking suplex on the on the on the guardrail, I, I swear to God, I love this guy. He's fucking great. Uh, Blade Buster for a near fall. That's his um twisting brain buster. Uh, complete shot. And usually he goes right into the deadlift German. Bum boy hits the complete shot. Starts flexing. Takes his time. 
hits the deadlift suplex, hits the double bicep, and I'm just like, yo, this guy, they should never tell this man he's winning the title. <laughs> this guy was flexing so hard. Uh, he does one of my favorite things, and not a lot of people do. It's a very dangerous fucking maneuver. He takes Okada near the rope, and he hits a Saito suplex from the inside of the ring to the outside. Uh, Okada ends up hitting his rib, because that's the story. He's working the ribs, too. Uh, Okada with a top rope shotgun drop kick, uh, then fucking sees Jay White getting up. He finally makes him off and hits a big running shotgun drop kick again. Uh, top rope elbow drop by Okada. Freaking Okada's up trying to fight back the best he can. Jay White ends up taking him down, hits a reverse dragon screw like Tanahashi. While Tanahashi's outside commentating, he looks right at him while he's doing it. Hits another reverse dragon screw and locks in the Tanahashi tap out, which is now the Okada tap out. Uh, after he's done with that submission hold, he's looking at Tanahashi, talking trash the whole time. This one's for you, baby. This one's for you. I love this guy. Uh, turns it into the cloverleaf while also staring at Tanahashi. That's Tana's move right there. Uh, Okada ends up fighting back. Uh, Jay White's fleeting himself way too much. He hits the ropes. Okada finally hits the big, big drop kick. Uh, ends up hurting his knee on the way down, though. Uh, Gato slides the chair in. Okada catches it, throws the chair away, locks in the money clip. Here we fucking go. I fucking hate the money clip. He locks in the money clip. Jay White is not tapping. He, I don't think he's ever tapped to the money clip. Uh, Okada hits a cool like backbreaker from the money clip while he keeps it locked in. Gato distracts, uh, then Jay White with a low blow. Uh, big strike exchange. Uh, they have a big fight over here. Okada finally starts getting pissed off. He keeps too sweet chopping him. He's not working. Uh, he ends up killing Jay with a forearm. Uh, sleeper suplex right on Okada's neck. Uh, he decides to follow it up. He goes, yo, look at this. And he hits a regal plex. Okada kicks out. Uh, fucking cross arm bloody Sunday. I love the version of the bloody Sunday. Jay White does. I love it. Uh, so he hits the bloody Sunday. He gets Okada up and he hits a Rainmaker, keeping wrist control. Uh, Jay White hits another Rainmaker. Okada ends up getting pissed off, hits his own Rainmaker, gets him up again, hits another Rainmaker. Uh, fucking uh, Jay White ends up dodging that. Okada catches him in the spiral tombstone, hits a spinning Rainmaker. Uh, and here we go. Okada is about to end it. He's doing the whole setup this time. Jay White ducks the Rainmaker. Then Okada ducks the Rainmaker. Then he ducks a clothesline. Then he ducks a clothesline. Then he ducks a clothesline. Uh, they're going crazy. They're going 100 miles per hour. Uh, Jay White hits the ropes. Okada catches him with another drop kick. No cells. Get right up. Mitsunoku driver for a near fall. Okada is doing the whole setup. He's about to end it. Going for the Rainmaker. But fucking uh, Jay White does this cool thing where he shoulder blocks him while he drags him in for the Rainmaker. Okada tries to fight back out of that. Tries to go for the Rainmaker again. Jay White hits the Blade Runner out of nowhere. And one, two, three. Brand new IWGP World Champ, baby. I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, he calls out. He cuts some of the best. Pro he cuts two of his best promos. He cuts a victory promo. And then he cuts the promo backstage. It's fantastic. But... I couldn't believe it. Like, I was like, get the fuck. Jay White, basically clean. Because, you know, you can't count the Gato distraction too much. Because, you know, it's all the time. It's like hustle torture bullshit, but not as bad. Yeah, this motherfucker did it. That, that I, I was like, get get out of town. This dude really fucking did it. He beat Okada. For the IWGP World Champion. So... He basically said in a promo to Hangman, because remember, Hangman challenged Okada for the IWGP world title at Forbidden Door. So, I'm like, okay, I guess Hangman fights Jay White. But Jay White then cuts a promo saying, you challenged Okada, but you're not getting no damn title shot, you bitch cowboy or whatever. So, I don't know what happens now. Do we still get Hangman and Okada? Which we should. It should be Lariat versus Lariat. You know, Buckshot versus uh, Rainmaker. But now, who challenges Jay White? Does Jay White have a regular title defense? Does, AEW, does someone from AEW challenge him? 
you know, he's talking a lot of shit of Kenny Omega. But to me, that would be dumb wasting Kenny on Jay White. I love Jay White and Kenny has some good ass matches. If you bring Kenny Omega in, you have to do Kenny versus Okada. You have to. And that's the main event of the show. You know, fuck the AEW World title. Fuck the IWGP. It don't fucking matter at that fucking point. So I don't know. This was uh, this was a fucking monkey wrench. We can either get two matches out of it, or you, I would prefer Hangman versus Jay White, and then we have uh freaking uh Okada and Kenny. I don't know. It's gonna be crazy, but yeah, that was Dominion. Uh, fun tag team matches here. Uh, definitely the surprise stealer. Honestly, I really, really like that. I love the main event. The main event was my favorite match of the show. Uh, I love Jay White. Everyone, you know, some people don't like the way Okada and Jay White do stuff. You know, they're a little slow build, but then they go a little nuts so crazy towards the end. I like it, though. But um, Okada and Jay White was the best match, but close second was Karo and Tomatonga, bro. That match was awesome. Well, Osprey and Sonata was nice, uh, but I feel like Sonata wasn't going at full power like he usually does. Because, you know, he is just getting back from an injury. And Shingo and Taichi was fucking dope as shit. Goto and Tanahashi was solid as fuck. And, uh, yeah, uh, this was a really fun show. I thought this was a very, very fun show. Uh, great main event. Surprising ass shit. Um, I'm, I'm still in awe, honestly. I still... Is kind of crazy what they did. So th- this should be uh this should be a little crazy right now. <laughs>